Hey there, I'm Tara Sands, and you're watching In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl, ATF. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actress. She's best known for voicing Bulbasaur in the Pokemon anime. Falalo and Falala <laughs> in Kirby right back at you. Oh, um, or, oh yeah, taking it back there. You're um, digging deep. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey in Stitch, the anime, Spyler in the US dub of I Spy, Angel in the Four Kids uh, dub of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Nancy in Scooby Doo Stage Fright, and was also the host of Fridays on Cartoon Network, if you remember that, if you live in America. My guest is Tara Sands. Hi, Tara. Hi. You picked some funny roles there. Wow. I don't even remember some of those. Really? Well, yeah, I mean, so Ninja Turtles and I Spy were actually weren't dubs. Those were new animation when we did those. So that was fun, oh, actually. That right. was really fun. Well, and then, but like, God, that Stitch thing. I guess that was a small role I played in Stitch. I don't remember that. Wow. That's oh, funny. I don't know. Yeah, Sometimes the internet gets it wrong. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Think yeah, that's all right. Um, The reason why I said the four kids is because if I just said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, people would be like, 2012 series the 1986 yeah. series the 2018 series and also mm -hmm. because i spy actually got a uk dub over here it was actually it, it was redubbed yeah um with british was, accents i guess yeah so it, okay. voice actor, oh how yeah. funny oh, yeah I, so I'll have i to said it that. yeah so if i said it, and my british viewers would be like no lizzie waterworth voiced spyler and i spice and she's a famous british voice actress and um interesting yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, and one the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was one of the few shows that wasn't a dubbed show at Four Kids. So sometimes people don't, it's not unusual that you didn't know that because we did so few new animated shows there. Ah, well, I was meant to say really version, not but I, kind of, I guess it kind of just slid no, out. No, no, it totally, to what version. you said made sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd pretty much like to start off. I know we've only got about half an hour, so I'd really like to get into it straight away. Yeah. Um, so instead of asking first, how did you get into voice of a role? I'd like to ask by you know, I'd like to ask you about your experience working on the film Scooby Doo Stage Fright. Oh gosh. Um you know, so that was a while ago. I played one of the members of a band. I, it wasn't a huge part. Um but it was sort of a bummer because I recorded alone and sometimes the fun of did those. Did you? I was going to yeah. ask you, did you? I know. Oh, no. So it was kind of a bummer because I was by myself. Um, but it was <laughs> super fun. Colette Sunderman was the voice director on that. and mm -hmm. all... Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Oh, 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 right. You, you don't know what's inside, though. What's inside? Well, let's have a look. <laughs> you missed out oh, meeting Frank Wilka. Oh, <laughs> what a talent. Oh, my gosh. Such a talented guy. I, w I have not worked with him, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I suppose I stage fright does count because it's the same project, even if you didn't let's, record together. Let's count it. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow, you, you recorded by yourself with Colette Sunderman, the voice directed it. And that actually had a lot of good talent on that. I mean, I'm just looking at the voice cast now and uh, there's way too many to name. There's Eric Bowser, Jeff Bennett. Yeah. Kate Higgins, Tara Strong, Paul Rugg, Keith Ferguson, Travis Willingham. Oh my word. Good, Troy that's Baker. That's a good group there. Look at that. Yeah, Kevin Mark Richardson. Like, wow, I've had some of these on my podcast. Would have been Paul's fun been... to record with everybody, but no. Oh, yeah. Trust yeah. me. If it was Andrea Romano, because she did do a, a few Scooby Doo uh, yeah. director video films, she would have insisted that you all recorded together because that's how she did her recording sessions. Well, sometimes the big parts all record together. I'm sure they did. Um, it's I, it was more that's more like an incidental role. So I think you know for those in general, they they don't want to take up the time and you know yeah space with with yeah. you know I think I was probably in and out in a half an hour for that job. So ah uh, right. Well, so at least you had you know, fun totally fun i don't you know we don't really even get to see the whole script or we know so little so it i should go back and watch these things but i hate watching myself but at some point i should watch it because the rest of it is so good you know the rest of the cast is so awesome so yeah something like that i should see yeah yeah of course maybe in the future yeah i need to i need to start watching some of the directed video ones as well to be fair um <clears throat> the next topic i'd like to touch down on is Pokemon, gotta catch gotta them catch all. Oh, oh okay. my gosh. Like, How do we not? We can't not talk about Pokemon. Trust me, I had an older brother. Absolutely loved Pokemon. He had like the Pogger, the little circle things, he had the cars, he oh. had all like 
plush toys oh my gosh like VHS tapes there's, wow. there's so much to have is the thing like someone asked me like oh do you collect all the toys and stuff of your characters I'm like if I collected all the Pokemon Bulbasaur stuff I would have no room you know I I collect I buy the things that I think are a little bit unique or different but there would be no way to to, to collect it all <laughs> oh I've yeah seen other people's Bulbasaur collections and they're pretty amazing I yeah I've I've stop myself from from overdoing it i just have to um, I'll put a little, little shelf up in your recording booth and just with all your little, little bulb, I bulb sauce i do well i have but i put all my uh, like all the toys of my characters i can't love i can't listen he is the best i do love him but i can't let him overrun it you know because <laughs> there would again there would be no room there's too much merch <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I suppose, I suppose there is. Have you seen the uh, the, the Builder Bear released a Bulbasaur at one point? Have you? Yeah, super cute. I know, yeah. yeah. Is that, I know, did they have a voice chip with it? Did it have? They did, but it was after, it was the second, the new cast oh. got to be the voice chip. And I also saw that they might be doing Teddy Ursa, who I voiced, but the internet doesn't know that. I, I don't know. I looked it up the other day. I don't think the internet knows that I did that voice too. So no. I was like, I want to. Teddy Ursa build a bear. Yeah, <laughs> that would be super might cute. See. Might see if it's your voice on it. Yeah. Um, speaking of voices, I'd really like to, you know, go all the way back. How did you get started with your career and what kind of led you to get in the role of Bulbasaur on Pokemon? <laughs> well, if you can uh, remember. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I started doing voice out, voiceovers uh, in high school. Actually, I was I lived near New York. I was going into the city doing auditions and stuff. Uh Pokemon, I don't remember the audition. It was the first anime role I ever got. It was after, not long after I graduated college. Um, I just remember the first day of work thinking, oh, this is the weirdest show I've ever seen. Like, I'll never be back for the, uh, forget it. <laughs> Cause I, I mean, we knew it was at that point, you know, again, there, we couldn't Google this stuff. Um, we knew it was a big show in Japan, but it had given kids seizures, so it was kind of controversial. Oh, yeah, I think that that's episode. A, that was episode. like a punchline. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't know the extent of it. And they, they're so smart, those Pokemon folks. Like, I mean, having the cards and the games and the show and the merchandise. And there's so many things for kids to to or and adults to grasp onto so like i know kids who won't watch the show but they love the cards or people who only play the games and there's kind of something for everyone in there and the design elements of these characters kind of just make them so lovable i watch kids just gravitate towards the artwork um so they they know what they're doing it, it works yeah yeah we're oh, still could be talking like... about it <laughs> you know yeah yeah or you could be like me just watch the show but don't have any merchandise whatsoever <laughs> Right. So that's the thing. It's like, that's what I love about it is that there's kind of a, a way in for everybody. Some of these kids I know just have thousands of cards and have never played a game or watched the show. So I say, like, uh. do you know what Bulbasaur sounds like? And they're like, no, what are you talking about? It's a card. So they think I'm insane. <laughs> so how did you come up with the voice of Bulbasaur? Was it something that you created or was it something the directors had come up with or producers? Well, at the beginning, again, we were we we were all just just winging it um so what they basically now it's a little bit different but at the beginning they would um play you the japanese and say hey sound sound like this like this is the area of the voice but say bulbasaur because obviously the names are different in japanese um so they played me the the reference and then they said just try to say and i was like well what else do i say what do you mean and they're like no no he just says bulbasaur and i'm like Okay, this is weird. Um, but yeah, and they had no idea how many Pokemon there were going to be. Like, they didn't know who was coming back. They they didn't have access to, like, watch ahead or any of this. So so I was, it was really luck. Like, I was in the booth that day doing um, a character named Melanie in mm -hmm. Bulbasaur in the Hidden Village. And that's why I, I played Oddish in Bulbasaur, because they were in that episode. That It was dumb luck. It was... <laughs> It was not because I sounded like Bulbasaur. I had auditioned, I think, for Melanie, and that's why I was there. Or or maybe just done a general audition. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, could I hear a little bit of Bulbasaur, if that's all right with you? Bulbasaur, sir, Bulba. Bulbasaur, sir, Bulba. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh. No, it's nostalgic. <laughs> it's nostalgic. Everyone 
will agree. And um, when we say ridiculous in a silly way, yeah, no, but ridiculous so in like so lucky, no. yeah, ridiculous yeah. in a bad way. No, no, not no, all. no, all good. No, all love. Oh, wow, but seriously. <laughs> Wow, it's literally my brother is gonna be off the walls. Oh, as well as... <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, him. he has. I know he still has all the cards and all the pogs. I had a Pikachu pog. I had like we we have oh. all the little uh, the figures in the loft as well. Oh wow, um, I, you saved I think, it. Oh, we saved we saved okay. all of them. We okay, saved okay. all of them. Um, there is there isn't a. I'm trying to think. We, I think I did take a picture of a Bulbasaur. A toy that I had. Um, but whilst I try and find the picture of that, I'd like to ask you, mm-hmm. um, Tara. So I'd like I'd like to know about your move from New York to Los Angeles. Of course, you did work for four kids, and then you've now come and did work for Warner Brothers and all the stuff like that. So, so what made you move? What what? Well, I had tried to move earlier, like oh. I guess in '99, um, oh. and I, I it did. LA just didn't work for me then. I tried it and it wasn't the right fit. And then I went back to New York because I knew, you know, New York's not going anywhere. And I was happy there. And then I booked the Cartoon Network uh, hosting job. So yeah. in, I, I guess that was 2004, 2005. Um, I kind of had the, we shot that in Atlanta, in Georgia. So I had the ability to kind of live wherever I wanted at that point. And I had a job and they were going to fly me in either from New York or LA. And I knew there were a lot of extra shoots and things that they did in Los Angeles. So I thought, I don't want to miss out on any of that. So it, moving to Los Angeles with a job was a much better way to, to, to come here. Uh, it's a hard, If it's a tough city when you're not working. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that was like 15 years ago, and I stayed. So it worked oh, that time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did miss, so- I miss New York all the time. You know, I had to leave working on the four kids shows at that point. So I got replaced on Yu-Gi-Oh!, um, which yeah. is fine. It just happens. Um, yeah. And I think, and then by at that round, that point was when uh, all the Pokemon actors got let go and a new cast came in. So uh, the timing was kind of okay for that. It was a yeah. sad, sad, but I didn't really know what was going on since I had left. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have found the picture of the little Bulbasaur see. that's in my attic. Um, I think I see it. I'm trying to. I'm I'm looking at pictures online to see if I can. I can't find an exact picture on it, so yeah, if anyone okay. anyone knows about Pokemon, if you know, oh, I think of aha, oh no, found it. This is from 1999, I believe. If I'm wrong, Pokemon fans, please Ooh, correct me. See. Oh, that's a cute one. I know. So there we go. There we go. There he is. Better. Yeah. yeah so adorable. um, I had there was uh, there's Pikachu as well. Uh, then I had. There was like a sort of toy there. I think there was a, P- a Pidgey one as well, oh, and then yeah. you know, and then there was an Ash figure. And, All the you know. stuff. Did you guys yeah. ever get the Pokemon cereal over there? We had that here. I'm not sure. I may have to ask my brother and get I'm back not, to I'm you. I'm always on that. curious, like what stuff goes to which territories, and like yeah, who gets what. Like sometimes the Funko Pops that you get are different than the ones we have. It's just it's interesting. I don't understand the distribution of stuff, but <laughs> uh... I'm glad you got some of it. Yes, we did get it in the UK. It launched in two thousand and one. Okay. Good. Yeah, I've just I've just seen on the internet they get Happy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm I'm sad I didn't get it because I was born in two thousand and four, so I completely um, missed out. Uh, <laughs> I so, think they um, have a new version of it. It's not the same version, but because I remember they had a marshmallow shape of Oddish, and I was very excited uh, about that. Oh, that's really cool! And wow. And I was saving the box, and my mom. My parents threw it away and they were like, it was old. And I was like, that wasn't the point. <laughs> Ooh, brutal. Trust me, that's happened to me way too many times before. Honestly, I know the feeling. Yeah, mm. I'm sure I'll do it to someone else one day. So <laughs> <laughs> Get your revenge, Tara. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll throw oh, out their stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, indeed. I spy. You were Spyler. Oh. In yeah. the original, so I should say the original I Spy. Um, so when I say the original, I mean the one with American accents, because of course, as I mentioned before, we got a British dub over here. So I, I think that was kind of how I found out more about you. Like I knew you obviously Bulbasaur and stuff, but then I found out you were Spyler. I was like, wow. Oh, so what was it like working that on that show? show? Because I can see in my head. Obviously, I can't, the voices are different in my head, but it was all pretty much the same, and it's just. It had all these like different 
characters, like toys that came to life. So I got asked, what was it like to work on that show? So, so much fun. Um, Coincidentally, this is not how I got the job, but my friend's mother is Jean Marzolo, who wrote the books that it's based on. Oh, wow. So I grew up. So when I got the job, I called them and I was like, you guys, I'm working on this project based on your mom's books. Uh, So that was pretty cool. Um, I love, listen, I love anything that's educational and made for kids. And that was a a circumstance where we did get to record as a cast, which is always more fun. Cause again, I think that's why I pointed out at the beginning that it wasn't a dub because it's done. So everything's so different. Yeah. It's not a dub. So we we had a really good time. We recorded at a studio called beat street in New York and just working directly with the scholastic people and, uh, watching a book come to life is there's just nothing cooler we got to sing a little um just and and, you know kids like formulaic stuff so we always knew going in okay this is the formula of the show this is the these are the beats we have to hit and i i like that i i love knowing kind of what to expect and then seeing the little differences within the scripts um and just knowing that the audience it was for and these kids that were watching who were learning to to you know, they're young enough, kids probably learning to speak and find things and vocabulary and all that stuff. And just being a part of that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. I always find it interesting how it was like inanimate objects, like Spyler's head was made of a tennis ball and had like string or something coming off it. And then Susie was made out of blocks and stuff. And, you know, it just didn't, it, it really, I think that made me more intrigued than the actual educational aspect of the show itself. Right. Well, because it looked like yeah. something you could build like a kid could look yeah. at that and say oh I can make I have all the stuff here to make that and that's that's the you know any kid with an artistic sensibility that that's inspiring to them yeah like, oh, you don't need a lot of money you don't need fancy things I can use my blocks and this bolt this roll of string and put it together and make a person or you know a car or whatever yeah yeah all that reminds me there was a uh, there was a duck in the show that had like monster truck wheels yes, <laughs> yes. Like, yeah oh man because it's because i remember the name of the duck what was the name of that duck i don't I guess, remember you have Quacky to or Google something. Yeah, I, don't know. Uh, I spy uh can you remember what spyla sounded like oh yeah he sounded like mokuba <laughs> uh. a lot of my a lot of my little boy characters I, and i know this they there's a um there's a voice that like it's interesting because when you're dubbing you realize that there's a different little boy voice that Japanese audiences like American audiences tend to like that raspiness um so I I put that into a lot of my characters he's younger than Mokuba because he was he yeah. was more like here like I spy you spy let's all play I spy like, I spy <laughs> oh he was so cute he was the cutest. yeah what show was Mokuba from may I ask oh sorry Yu-Gi-Oh Yu-Gi-Oh! Wow, right. All right. I'm not that familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I don't think like it was sort of like, you know, in our house, I was mainly like Pokemon and Digimon. Right. I believe you've done a few Digimon stuff as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've done Digimon Adventure Try, the, the movies when they're a little bit older. So that was fun to play them as like teenagers as opposed to little kids. I didn't yeah. get to do the version with the little kids, but th- this was super fun. Oh, that's true. Oh, well. <laughs> I was just, I was just, I, I'm like so it's cool. an honor to be part of those two franchises you know what I mean like it's it's cool to work on something that people grew up with yeah. and part of their history yeah oh um the the duck is just called duck duck that's it yeah yeah wow, that's was... that's actually pretty cute I was I, I, I can't <laughs> the dog was named Cece on I Spy so it was Spyler Cece and Duck yeah I guess yeah that was it. Yeah, I think there was like a like a tow truck as well, like a dumper truck. Oh it man! It didn't talk. I don't think it talked though. Wheeler. Think... Wheeler. Did Wheeler? I don't remember if Wheeler talked. It says we'll voiced by it. Big Al. I don't know who Big Al is. But says, I don't either. I never. Big, met Al, Big Al, Ellen Lee, Cindy Creek, more. So, yeah, them. I, I remember the the ladies, but Aww. yeah, I don't know who Big Al is. Hmm. Must be interesting. A, maybe a disguised name, like a pen name or something like that. You know, someone who wants to just completely name remain anonymous or something it, like that. I bet it was someone who worked there who like they let they had do it and they're like, just put Big Al. <laughs> One of the producers. <laughs> Probably. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, most most likely. Yeah. Well, well, Big Al, if you're watching this, please yeah. contact me. I'm interested. We wanna know we wanna know who you know are. Who you really are, Big Al. Yeah, come on, Big Al. Let us let us Reveal know. Reveal your yourself, Al. Imagine if it's just Big Al and it's just it actually just ends up being like 
Weird Al Yankovic or someone oh, well, like how that. How cool would that be? Or if they're just really little and it's like just ironic that they're like <laughs> big Al. What if it says Big Al voice Wheeler who didn't speak? Maybe it's just saying Big Al is a person who just doesn't talk. Maybe <laughs> I, I don't know, but now I'm gonna have to go back and watch it and hear Big Al. Okay. Yeah, not you. You're gonna make me now watch it homework. now as well. I have homework. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I will send you the UK uh, dope of Ice Spy yeah, and a few yeah, other things totally. I know about. Yeah, because okay, cool. it's you. really cool. To, um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, the final topic I really want to touch down on is some little random quickfire questions, if that's oh, okay. Because okay. I know we yeah. haven't got enough a lot of time left, but all right, um, hit, I'm hit interested. Me with them. Okay. Um, who's your favorite Pokemon that is not Bulbasaur? Oddish, or well, I'm playing Yamper now, so I might have to say Yamper since it's my current good choice. role. Go good choice. Answer. Good choice. Uh, favorite color? Blue. Blue. Oh, oh, I, mean, I, look, I, I don't surprised? think I could tell. I, I, could, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everything in my apartment's blue. <laughs> oh, but for me, it's yellow. I, I, I have nothing yellow to show at the moment. <laughs> someone, someone was in my apartment. A friend of mine well. was over and they said to me, I think your aura is blue. And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> like it was, And they felt like they were like really deep about it. And I was like, I don't know. Everything around here is blue. <laughs> I don't know how, how profound that is. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, favorite food? Pizza. Oh, same as me. Same as me. What do you like on your pizza? I well, if I'm if the first time I get pizza from somewhere, you have to do just a regular. You can't get any toppings. You have to test it before you start throwing stuff on it. But then I'll put like peppers and onions and pineapple. Uh. Yes, pineapple does belong on pizza. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't know because the only pizza I really eat is a uh, margarita, a uh, cheese. Well, sometimes oh, if I get yeah. a Domino's, I'll order a tandoori chicken on it, which is they do probably the best tandoori Wait, chicken. Wait, they have a tandoori chicken option in in the UK. They did them for a few years, but they've only just brought it back. Wow. It's beautiful, honestly. I've missed it so much. I used to have it like when I was like seven-ish. And then, you know, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I could just eat a whole bag of this. And now they've just brought it back. I'm like... Oh my gosh, the Indian food in the in the UK is fantastic. They're such good... We have a local Chinese and it's beautiful. Oh, oh my really? gosh. Interesting. They do the best chow mein, the best noodles, mm. best curry. Mm. Oh my I'll have gosh. to come back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, come back. You've been to England before? Yeah, I did. I've been there for, for fun. And then I was there, I think, twice for conventions. Um, oh. hopefully, hopefully I'll do another one there soon. I, lo- I, I love it there. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to do, because I know uh, there's, a, there's a few comic cons. They usually have some anime voice actors. I know yeah, they have yeah, Lucy totally. Christian, Alexis, Tip- uh, Alexis Tipton, I think that's her name, if mm-hmm. I didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some great conventions. J. Michael uh, Tatum, yeah, they yeah. they are uh, Edinburgh, yeah. So they had all those people. At, um, mm-hmm. I did Edinburgh uh, that Glasgow. I, just went. I did uh, Glasgow. Oh yeah. And, uh, and then I tra- I didn't get to do the convention in Edinburgh, but I'd love to. Hopefully, I'll get back there. Yeah, that was oh. where I met Frank. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, what hopefully. a beautiful city. Oh. I know. We explored it the day before I did the convention. It felt so surreal. Like, you know, I'd never been to Scotland before. And oh, wow, it. it was just, yeah. it was like entering a, a new world to me. Mm-hmm. Um, on the same subject, yeah. where is a place in the world that you'd really like to go? Any country, any anywhere? Well, okay, I have it. I'm going to Japan, which was on my list, <gasps> but I'm going there soon. But the next trip, which has been, I'm so excited. After that, Greece, I think, is the next place I'd like to see. Wow, whereabouts in Greece? Anywhere. Ooh. Well, I mean, you know, within reason. But like I just, Corfu, it's a country I haven't Crete, been to. You know. so. Yeah, yeah. I My siblings have been to um, Greece before. It's beautiful and it's very hot. That's all I know. Right. I've never been abroad, never been out of the UK. Apart oh, from the world, so. but you've seen Edinburgh, which is awesome. Yeah. I was, yeah. I, 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 would, would you pass that as abroad? I suppose like abroad, no. it only counts when you're on an no, airplane. No, but it's so different. I feel like that city just feels yeah. different to me. 
that's yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Well, I'm yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm planning on going to America next summer, so oh, hopefully, good. I know. Oh. Yeah, I've, I've wanted to go for the longest time because I've had. Well, I know a lot of voice actors who live in America, and they've all said, "Oh yeah, I'll meet. We'll meet. We'll get a coffee or something." And it's just some of them invited me to recording sessions, and it's just really. Oh. Oh yeah, you you should come. Yeah, you should see it. You should come for a convention and then explore a little bit, and then yeah. That's my plan for next year. There is a convention going on in March. I think it's a Transformers convention. It's at the Burbank oh. Uh, oh, Airport. Yeah, oh, perfect. So yeah, just make it a week and then just then like explore Los Angeles. I really want to go to Universal Studios Hollywood. That mm-hmm. is probably at the top of my list to go, followed by Good Disneyland. One. Uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Sunset Boulevard, the big Hollywood sign. There's so much. There's. I know. I, I know. I love be- the tourist. I live here, but I love the touristy stuff. I love the Wax Museum, and the, I, I mean, because when people. Oh yeah, Madame Two Swords. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys have that too, but like, I yeah, I one in London, one in Blackpool. People come in, like I'm. I don't mind doing the touristy stuff when they come to town. So. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, oh, what I was just going to say. Oh yes. Um, people usually say to me, "Oh." why do you want to go you're going to california why, why do you want to explore los angeles it's boring it's not really a good place but you know in my headspace i've got the idea a lot of people live there it's like the holy grail for acting voice acting yeah. you know it's just well I, well the, the convention i'm going is over a weekend but my parents are like you you you'd have to make it at least a week's trip if you because like yes. going for just three days isn't worth it you'd have to go for at least a week or two I'm like absolutely yes I'm just gonna yeah. lodge with different people and just run all over the state oh, <laughs> I love it oh I'm excited for you to see it oh good good good, good. yeah hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll have to try and meet if, 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 if yeah, we somehow sure. pass each other yeah oh that's so cool well, honestly like I'm so excited um my final question is okay. do you prefer dubbing or recording original animation so like recording your voice and then the, the the animation gets animated over your audio or do you prefer dubbing over existing audio i pref- i prefer the new animation when i get to work with other people like that's the caveat like because dubbing, there's there's some kind of weird freedom in the restrictions of dubbing. I, but but then there's times when I'm like, oh, I know that character wouldn't say it like that, but we don't have enough lip flap to say it. You know, there's there's a lot of frustrations and technical stuff that goes into dubbing that that it doesn't ruin the artistic process, but it just stifles it a tiny bit. Um, and with new animation, it, it's like you can do anything you know, your, the reactions that you want to give that, like, if I want to sigh for a long time, I can put that in there. If it makes sense. I, I'm not restricted by the, by the lip flap. Lip flap is like the bane of our existence when we dub. It's frustrating. Yeah. It's just, it's just, just what disappoints me is the fact that people used to record in groups. Now either days you record solo or you record virtually. And even if you record virtually, it's, it's by yourself. Um, so I'm doing, a theme park ride which is located in california obviously oh. she's my nda i can't exactly say where oh. in california it will that's be. really cool though okay i know um i don't know how recording is gonna work for me though because i know i'm doing it i don't know soon i don't know how, how much i can mention of this because of my nda right. that i've signed but we are recording it soon but like i'm recording it with another person who who my character is meant to be partnered with yeah and they're based in america so it's the it's trying to get i don't know if it'll be virtually or i would have to have the directors of the ride voice directing me on zoom or something because i will be doing it in an actual recording studio yeah, near me no that's what we usually do so like this morning i recorded a podcast um where i was opposite another actor and they had well they had three actors in the zoom and then we record i mean it's different when you're in a, in a recording studio but i recorded it on my computer and they every all the actors recorded themselves which is probably what you'll do yeah. except you won't have to press buttons um <sighs> and we looked at we were able to look at each other on zoom sometimes it's there's a little lag or there's a little overlap because of it but it's it was great i it's a podcast that's really fun but again because i get to record with other people and it's for kids it's adorable um Detective Dexter, if anyone has kids that want to listen to this podcast. Uh, But so it's all what is nice is there are ways to still record together, even when we're not in the same space. So that's my guess about how you'll do it. 
I appreciate the advice and the uh, information. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Tara. Because I know the recording studio is probably going to have to converse with the directors of the ride and then they're going to converse with me for the times that I can come in and the times this other person is yep. available because of the time difference. And also because I'm in college four days a week working on a Christmas oh. show that we're doing next month. Oh, like a full, awesome. fully-fledged panto that we're doing. Oh, um, so I'm it. quite excited for that. That's awesome. Uh, so you're yeah. busy, which is busy is good. Yep. Yeah, usually I'm not that busy, but now I guess I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, you got to work be. to do. No, it's oh, great. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what's nice is if you're going to recording studio, they'll figure out all that logistical stuff and you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. That's, that's probably the easiest part. I think we are done. Oh, yes, we are done. Yeah. Thank um, and it's you. good this time. So much well. fun. You're welcome. Tara, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on my podcast. I really Thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. You're welcome. Where can <laughs> we find you on the internet? Have you got any social media handles or is there anything you want to promote? Yeah, it's so boring. It's just at Tara Sands LA on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And I will post some nonsense there for you. I post nonsense <laughs> too. I know. I, I know. <laughs> it's mutual, mutual interest. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, with that, I'll sign off here to you at home. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF with the lovely Tara Sands. Stay safe, stay happy, be kind to others and yourself, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. And. Bye. Bye.